SMT Nation, we back. We've got a video for you here today. We're going to be discussing the market as it pertains to the big carriers. All right, so you got Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. And I wanted to discuss a couple of things here that I think are going to be, you know, future looking a little bit in the near term and then a little bit long term and kind of the way that things are as well. All right, so uh, pictured here on the screen is a uh, tweet that I just posted this morning at the time of this recording. It's uh, November 20th, uh, so I, I will be releasing this today. Uh, but I want what I want to show you guys is a little bit of stuff that's kind of like in the media. Uh, this is, you know, these are articles posted on, on Seeking Alpha, which is, you know, an investor kind of market watching industry Wall Street kind of uh, website where you can look into companies. And if you're a potential investor, you're looking for information on uh you know companies as uh as you look to maybe buy shares and stuff like that but really what it does i think it goes to show you where things lie within the market within the industry of wireless and telco all right so here is part of the article from seeking alpha i'll see if i can find the article and then post the original link all right verizon's ace in the hole all right so in this article it talks about verizon in a bull case that means, you know, in a positive way, like why people would want to buy the stock. Most of Verizon's poor results on net phone additions can be attributed to one factor. Verizon raised prices for its plans. Even with that headwind, Verizon still leads rivals by a wide margin. The company has 91.5 million postpaid subs, AT&T at 82.7, and T-Mobile just under 71 million. 71.1 million. Why does Verizon hold the lead? It likely boils down to network quality. According to JD Power, they have ranked Verizon as having the highest quality network for the 29th straight year. That assessment backed by Root Metrics in a case study. These two things, folks, is probably why people don't leave Verizon in droves. Now they have churned out. Churn has spiked at Verizon this year. That is true. So there is you know, a fair number of people that are leaving due to pricing. But clearly, based on this, these studies, JD Power, Root Metrics, they're not leaving because of the network. Going on, aside from placing Verizon at the head of the pack 15 straight year, Root Metrics assessed 5G networks for the first time. The study determined that Verizon delivered the fastest aggregate median download speed across the U.S. and provided an unmatched, unmatched combination of fast speeds plus exceptional reliability with an expanding 5G network. Okay, so this all this comes to the point where Verizon is spending big on their C-band upgrades, their 5G ultra-wideband network. They're spending a dedicated $10 billion on building out C-band. And then on top of that, they are still spending on the rest of the network. So that's one fiber, you know, backhaul to tower sites, uh, as well as their files build, it continues to grow, albeit very slowly. And then uh, in the enterprise space and business space, they do still build out fiber. And so you, so you have this combination of fiber and C-band, and then you have like the dedication to densification in C-RAN and millimeter wave. They truly are building an exceptional network. Okay, so here is what how my tweet reads. Verizon Network Excellence Perception Continues. 5G still doesn't factor highly into consumer decisions. AT&T's 5G perception has been improving, and then T-Mobile has been flat or slightly negative since the Sprint merger. That according to survey data, where AT&T has garnered a 3 to 5% improvement in customer perception of their 5G network, T-Mobile has gone from 31 to 30% in terms of its uh, survey rated for 5G. So all that dedication to marketing for about 5G and such really hasn't paid dividends for T-Mobile in terms of perception. Verizon churn is due to pricing. AT&T grows due to discounts and promotions. T-Mobile is the value play coming in with the best pricing, you know, on a per line basis. All right. So this article from Seeking Alpha tells you everything you need to know about where the market is. Now, Verizon has responded a little bit. And the reason I want to say that is we have seen losses at Verizon and customers, right? They do have a spike in churn. 
Meanwhile, T-Mobile's churn rate is dipping. Remember, lower churn is good. And then AT&T, even though they raised prices, their churn barely spiked. Very, very small. So clearly the companies are moving in different directions. But it may seem that things at Verizon might be improving. All indications at Verizon from their CEO is that things will be better starting Q1 of next year. I don't know how. I don't know what's in his plans. I don't know what he plans to do. But I will tell you that there is a new value segment with a uh, a dedicated team and executive there. I think her name is Angie Klein. She's going to be running the Verizon value segment or the value business. That might be how Verizon is going to do this. They're going to take their value segments, their prepaid, their off brands, and then they're going to be offering customers better pricing through those channels. That's how I think this is going to play out. I don't think Verizon postpaid is going to change much. At least that's not the indication. Unless things were to change in Q1 of next year. I mean, we're not that far away. It's already November 20th. So that could be a possibility that changes com- could come to postpaid in Q1 or Q2 of next year. But based on the moves, the acquisition of TrackPhone, uh, trying to be competitive and prepaid, you know, they've got like 20 million subscribers now and prepaid because of the track phone deal. But maybe that's how they're going to do it. Total by, uh, what is it? Total by Verizon, visible by Verizon. They've got all these, you know, prepaid brands now. They can consolidate those things, let the prepaid businesses do their thing and compete that way. I just don't know how effective that's going to be. So, you know, when, when, and when you look at investors, they're probably looking at Verizon like, wow, this this stock has been beat up pretty bad. If it were to maybe fall a little bit and Verizon was going to address, you know, their debt load, maybe it becomes a inattractive, you know, buy. Maybe it be, does become a bull case for them. But I will tell you guys, and I don't give financial advice to people because those are decisions you have to make. It's your money. But there is something to be said about Verizon's CapEx on the network. They have been spending massive dollars on C-band, right? The dedicated $10 billion in CapEx. That number after next year, like, you know, I, I should say after 2023, there's only a couple of billion dollars left to spend on C-band. They spent 5 to $6 billion in 2022. They spent $2 billion in 2021. They spent over $40 billion on the C-band spectrum in the FCC auction. That spending, once we're done here in 2023, basically, it's done. That means the spending is going to stabilize. You're probably actually going to see it regress a little bit, right? They're going to spend a little bit less money. I think they said they want to be down to like $17 billion entirely as a Verizon wireless company. And that includes fiber too. So there won't be much of that work left to do. So the spending is going to dip. And that might be attractive for... The investor, because if the dividend stays up and they continue to pay that and they start to pay down some of the debt, which some of that, guys, it's it goes way back. Some of that debt is from when they actually bought out Vodafone. Uh, I I think that was like in when was that like 2012 or something? 2014. I forget. It's been a while. Uh, So you have that and then you have the C-band spectrum you had to buy and pay for. And then you got all this spending going on. Don't forget about like Go90, Bloomberg. Yahoo, those were bad moves too, trying to get into media. All that stuff is in the rearview mirror now. So it's all network all day. And if you look, their fixed wireless access, their 5G home internet is successful. It is growing. They're adding on average, and we're just averaging the last three quarters, between 200 and 300,000 combined net ads in the 5G home and 5G business. I expect that number to continue to stay there. In fact, some quarters, I think it's probably going to peak above 300, maybe almost 400,000 net ads. That just depends on when the rest of the C-band clears at the end of 2023. Don't forget that Verizon is early releasing or early at getting early access to C-band in an additional 30 plus markets. So originally it was 46 PEAs or markets. They're going to free up an additional 30 markets early. That gives them more spectrum and more places, allowing those upgrades to go live. So the network excellence is only going to continue on a grand scale. They spend a lot of money on upgrading their network. Verizon, for all the things that you may have feel that they have done wrong, the network's not one of them. 
right? They are spending heavily on the network. They are upgrading it. Now, they did neglect parts of the country's network. You know, they left a lot of rural sites untouched for a long time. We're going to call a spade a spade here. But they did say at the most recent, um, I forget what media and telco conference it was, uh, the CFO did say that we are going to upgrade all sites that have 4G gear that need to be upgraded to 5G. They're all getting it. So in the next year and a half, you are going to see all of your tower sites get those upgrades. The Verizon 5G Ultra Wideband Network will be a force to be reckoned with. That doesn't mean that T-Mobile's isn't going to be good. It doesn't mean that AT&T's isn't going to be good. But Verizon is not going to stand pat and not do anything. They are going to absolutely upgrade all their sites. They're going to make a fierce and phenomenal 5G network. And it's going to be, if not the best, according to here, you can see they do a very good job of it. Right. That's what these reports say. If it's not going to be one of the best, it will be outright the best. And I feel very strongly about the CBRS assets, the millimeter wave assets and the C-band assets in combination. I think it is going to be a very, very good network. One could make the argument it might be the best when it's all said and done. We shall see, though. Right. It all has to be executed. Um, I think it's going to be very good. A lot of people might agree with me. Some people might disagree. And that's okay. Maybe you think AT&T's build will be better. Maybe you think T-Mobile's will be better. You know, it's the, hey, those are valid arguments, right? Uh, they have to execute it. We shall see. Anyways, comment down below on anything that I discussed in this video and my tweet. I'll go ahead and post this uh, to the community tab as well. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter, it's at Sneed Tech is my Twitter handle. And uh, if you guys want to support me other ways, you could do that by becoming a member here on the YouTube side. And you can also check me out on Patreon. All those are linked in the description. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe for more, and turn on that bell notification icon to never miss an upload. And links for all things going on in the description. I'll leave you all with some positive words. Every new day is an opportunity to be great. Go out there and be great. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.